Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is another continuation of the Buffy series that I'm doing um, and I will be talking about um, season one, episode three of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know it's been a minute since I have uploaded a video, since I've uploaded a Buffy video. Um, so I'm sorry about that. I have been going through some mental health stuff. Um, so I just needed literally a break. Um, but I thought, you know, filming is an escape for me. So what better way to just, just relax and take my mind off things than film a Buffy video, which is one of my favorites. Um, so I'm not gonna ramble on too much, but I hope you guys have been well. Um, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helped me out um, and helped me grow my channel. Um, and also, if you're someone who is a fan of witches and witchcraft and watching anything to do with witches, you will be in for a treat. Get your broomstick ready, get your spell book ready, because we will be talking about episode three, which is witch in the Buffy series. This episode is the fact that it's probably the start of where we saw different supernatural elements within Buffy. Um, so no longer were we just focused on vampires, although I do love that. Um, we started incorporating more and more um, of the supernatural elements like werewolves, witches, things like that. Um, and I think season one was definitely a great way to explore um, the different sort of lanes that Buffy could go in uh, with the supernatural. Um, obviously we didn't tend to stick to that so much later on in the seasons um, but we did still see that um, witch element obviously with Willow and things like that um, in later seasons but this was definitely an introduction to witchcraft um, and Buffy having to really fight a different kind of evil that she is not used to. So as the episode begins um, Giles is not very happy with Buffy of course, when is he really ever happy with Buffy and her decisions? Um, because she has done the ultimate worst thing that a teenage girl can do. She's joined a cult. Or in other words, she is auditioning to, or trying out to be a cheerleader in her high school. Um, but obviously Giles isn't happy with that because he thinks that it's going to sort of detract her from her um, training and her work as the vampire slayer. Um, so he's really not happy that she's now wanting to be a cheerleader. But as we know, the whole sort of message that Buffy tries to convey in literally every episode, all seasons, is she just wants to be a normal teenage girl. Yes, yeah, she has to fight the forces of evil, but that shouldn't stop her from just living her life and being a typical teenage girl. And I think cheerleading is something that she wants to do. Um, and yeah, she goes out for it. But little does Giles know, it actually helps in the long run because um, it's sort of, you'll see the story unfold as we go. So literally this first scene is a great way um, of setting up the rest of the story and the rest of the plot because not only do we um, get introduced to the um, cheerleading squad, and obviously we know Cordelia is part of it, of course, um, because they're gonna play a big role in today's episode. Um, but not only that, it also shows um, sort of the conflict between Buffy's duties as both now a cheerleader and, you know, just a typical teenage girl, um, as well as her duties as the vampire slayer. And my puppy has joined us in this video today. Hey, puppy. Hey. He's just woken up, so he will be joining us for the rest of this video. I hope you don't mind. Also, the fact that we know that Giles is so adamant for Buffy to prioritise her duties as the slayer, um, this sort of signifies the responsibilities from childhood to adulthood and what you tend to prioritise more as an adult compared to as a child. Um, obviously, Giles's priorities are obviously the Slayer, the Watcher, and Buffy's priorities are just being a teenager, hanging out with her friends and doing, obviously, after-school activities. I think in this episode, we really see that some part of Buffy really doesn't want to take on being the Slayer. Um, and she's really trying to fight against not having to have those responsibilities. So no matter what she does, whether that is cheerleading or uh, putting off her training or things like that, she really just doesn't want 
um, to have all this responsibility on her. And I think cheerleading is a way for her to to try and prove that she is just a typical teenage girl. Of course, Giles being the rational mental that he is, he argues the point that she needs to take on more, obviously, responsibility um, and focus more on her training because if we know from the previous layers, they basically dedicate their whole lives um, to fighting the force of evil and being the slayer. Um, whereas Buffy is sort of split, I guess, 50-50 between the two, um, especially in earlier seasons. Um, but the difference obviously being Buffy is growing up in the 90s. So um, what the other slayers didn't have is high school and um, just typical teenage life and um, that kind of stuff and romance and love and boyfriends, friendship. Um, so it is obviously a lot more difficult for her but also easier because she has that support around her um, which other slayers didn't have. I think in this episode we really see um, just more the elements how her friends um, influence her. So in a me metaphorical way Giles is really her mind and he influences her in the sense of steering in the right direction, telling her what's right from wrong, what she needs to do, her responsibilities. Um, and then we've got Willow, who is more of the spirit um, and the metaphorical spirit for Buffy. Um, and obviously we know that Willow is going to be a witch and starts practicing witchcraft as well. And Xander is um, the heart um, for Buffy and you can really tell that because he does everything with love and he always wants to help her and be by her side no matter what um, and we'll start to see this more as the show as the show continues but also throughout this um, episode as we cut to the chilling practice or tryouts uh, with just Xander there basically objectifying every girl that is trying out um, although he's there as a support for Buffy, but not really because he's just there to obviously look at a bunch of cheerleaders um, and look at obviously Cordelia who he starts to have a little crush on um, as we go along in the season. You no, know, his affections soon start to focus more on Buffy, um, whether that's a friendship or a crush that he has and he offers her a bracelet which is engraved with the words yours always, um, which is really sweet for Xander to do, but it's just a typical kind of Xander thing um, and it really shows that he is the heart of the group and the heart um, for Buffy as well. At this point, I'm not a huge fan of Xander's crush or love of Buffy um, because obviously it's still early on, so he is still getting to know her. Um, but also a lot of the jokes that he makes, whether it's out of being just nervous or whatever it is, um, are really sexist uh, when it comes to Buffy. Um, and I don't think he comes across in such a horrible intent, but it's probably just because he's nervous around her and it's just the way Xander is. He's a very goofy, lovable type of character. So um, the jokes that he makes are very sexist, but he doesn't mean it in a horrible way, I don't think. But um, as we know, we do flesh out obviously his character more and more. Um, and we obviously soon will appreciate um, the love and the friendship that they both have as opposed to Xander crushing on Buffy. But what also happens with obviously Xander's love for Buffy, especially um, as it starts to grow in this episode with him giving her the bracelet, although he doesn't acknowledge that it is a romantic gesture and he sort of says it's more as a good luck thing for her trying out. Um, we do know that it is obviously because he loves Buffy, but um, with this one-sided love that he has for her or romance, um, it hurts Willow because as we know, Willow loves Xander and she has for a very long time and um, she just doesn't feel that she is good enough for him or that he'll feel the same way because they've been friends for such a long time. Um, but he kind of flaunts it in front of Willow um, and in front of everyone. So, you know, if you're Willow, this is going to be pretty hard, you know. This guy that you've loved or had a crush on for so long is now crushing on your new friend that you all have that's just coming to town and um, obviously she's trying to compete but not really because Buffy's her friend um, so I kind of feel a little bit for Willow here um, but things will soon change as we continue the show and you'll see what I mean um, with all of their dynamics. So as the tryouts are sort of beginning um, we start with Amber who is trying out and then obviously Cordelia is kind of like talking under her breath um, about her and her trying out. She says something like, 
who does she think she is? A Laker girl? Um, or something like that. And it's really typical Cordelia. Um, she doesn't want to be outdone by anyone. Um, especially with something like cheerleading or popularity. Um, that's definitely no in um, Cordelia's book. Now we meet Amy who is really keen on joining the team. And we know that she trains with her mum daily. And she has this big pressure on her um, from her mum to join the team and become a cheerleader because her mum was a cheerleader and she won like championships and things like that as a cheerleader so we know that um she has this big pressure um to make the team as well the tryouts are then interrupted by amber's scream we know that her hands are caught on fire and she's screaming and obviously everyone's like what do we do um you know this is really strange that that's happened so everyone's sort of like not sure what to do um, and obviously Buffy's gonna sort of come in there and know definitely that it's some kind of supernatural thing that's caused it. Now we cut to a debrief in the library, obviously the Scooby gang, um, Giles, and they're all obviously talking about what's happened and what it could be and what could have caused this because it is really strange. Um, and up until this point, obviously they've only had to deal with vampires. Um, so now it's like, okay, what could this be? Could it be a witch? You know, what what is this? Um, sort of unknown thing that's obviously um, now affecting the cheerleading squad. Then we cut to uh, Buffy and Joyce at their home. Um, so Buffy's obviously trying to talk to her mum at this point, but her mum doesn't seem like she's listening, um, although she's kind of listening, but she's more distracted with trying to open some things around her house or whatever she's doing. I don't know if it's for like work or whatever. Um, and she just seems more preoccupied by that than Buffy and this is a similar tone that we will see um, more and more in Buffy where um, you, Buffy doesn't feel like she can talk to her mum as much um, or she feels judged by her mum or she doesn't feel that she um, can really talk to her um, and sort of Joyce makes a comment of it wouldn't kill you to help me or something um, which kind of is like mm, okay uh, but your daughter's trying to talk to you about, you know, stuff at school and you're not really listening. So obviously Buffy can help her. Buffy's strong. She can easily just open what she needs to. But it's more of the fact that I don't like this dynamic at the start of um, sort of in this first season. Um, obviously that does change slightly as seasons go along. But I feel like Joyce still doesn't fully trust um, or believe that Buffy will change um, or you know, be a good daughter in her eyes. Um, and I think that's sort of where, where this dynamic comes from at the start. Sort of um, continues the theme in this episode specifically of mothers and daughters, um, where Buffy and Joyce are two very different people with completely different interests. Like I said, half the time Joyce isn't even listening to what Buffy's talking about. And obviously Buffy being the Slayer, she can't open up to her mum and let her know that she's the Slayer. Um, and obviously then we will um, see the dynamic between Amy and her mum. Obviously Amy the girl that was trying out for cheerleading practice and how their interests are very similar in the sense that they both want um, or enjoyed being cheerleaders um, and they obviously both trying out for the school team um, and they I guess bond by practicing um, cheerleading and things like that which is a completely different dynamic to Buffy and Joyce. Then back at school, um, Buffy meets Amy by the, is it the lockers? Or the trophy cabinet? And um, basically Amy tells a story of her mother, um, who's known as Catherine the Great, uh, for being this great cheerleader and winning all these tournaments and things like that for her school. And basically all the pressures that now Amy has um, because she wants to obviously please her mum by joining the team as well and being as great as her mum was. And this is also a reference to the um, Russian Empress Catherine and it shows how highly Amy's mum was um, sort of considered when she was a teenager and looked up to and how much people sort of adored her um, for how good she was at cheerleading. Um, and obviously that's difficult for anyone to live up to, especially a daughter who's now trying to sort of relive those moments um, that her mum sort of wanted her to do. But as we as we know, Amy sort of offers nothing but praise and love for her mum 
um, and she's obviously talking very highly of her mum um, but not so much her dad um, she's quite being quite rude about her dad really um, and it kind of makes you question like okay what is going on here um, we know that there's a supernatural element in this episode so what could be going on here um, could Amy be a witch or you know what could be going on and I think uh, Buffy starts to question this as well in this moment and Buffy and Willa are talking and Buffy kind of brings up a comment of Mummy Dearest uh, which is a reference to a book and it's kind of talks about um, abuse and the toxic relationship between mother and daughter and she kind of sort of leans towards that especially now after talking to Amy um, and from what Willow has told Buffy about Amy because obviously Willow's grown up with Amy they've always gone to the same school and things like that and Amy's been to Willow's house um, so she's obviously offering some insight into who Amy and her mother are as well as obviously taking what Amy said about her mum um, by the trophy cabinet so she's kind of starting to put two and two together and really question it and um, sort of think you know there must be something more going on here is Amy really Amy or is Catherine Amy and Amy is in Catherine's body if you get what I mean you'll know if you've watched the episode um, sort of what happens and the lead up to this will make more sense obviously than me trying to explain it but you'll kind of see this as um, we sort of unveil the rest of the episode and then we go to a scene which I felt really bad for Willow because um, basically Xander is talking to Willow about um, his love or his crush for Buffy and he basically wants advice from Willow on what he could do I guess to win her over and just get obviously a girl's perspective um, and he kind of makes the comment that Willow is like basically one of the guy friends and she's his best friend which I felt really bad for Willow in this moment because obviously we know that Willow really likes Xander and no girl wants to or guy um, who's friends with someone that they really like wants to be um, offering advice for them to try and get with someone else um, and yeah it breaks my heart for Willow but um, obviously we know that Xander and, and Buffy are not gonna be a couple um, but it just still hearing that for Willow um, if you put yourself in Willow's shoes it's quite sad um, but literally this whole episode is Xander just either you know trying to win Buffy over or talking about Buffy and his attraction for Buffy um, with people that he really shouldn't be but later on in the episode um, we kind of um, a bit more happier for Willow when Buffy basically says that Xander is like one of the girls so it kind of makes Willow feel like okay there's no chance for Xander with Buffy because she just sees him as a close friend and one of the girls um, as kind of Xander sees Willow as one of the boys um, so it's kind of like a triumphant moment for Willow and you kind of feel like yes okay now Willow you may have a shot but even if you don't at least you know that Xander um, doesn't have a shot with Buffy now the plot or the potion thickens um, as we um, see Cordelia with, have a little jump scare there with Amy in the locker room obviously at this point obviously only it's episode three of season one we don't really know Cordelia that well we haven't really got to know her her character hasn't really been um, explored as much um, and she's still kind of on the outside of the group um, so we don't really know her intentions or she's not really as nice of a character at the start as she is later on when she starts obviously dating Xander and hanging out more with like Buffy and her um, her friends but um, this is a great way to kind of see where Cordelia sort of started from um, and how she will obviously progress and become a nicer person um, as the seasons sort of go along guys as i'm trying to record this video look at what my puppy is doing he's literally biting my whole hand i don't know if you can see that but he's literally biting my whole hand and it hurts as i'm trying to record this video so sorry guys and we cut to an exterior shot of amy's house um, and obviously we hear talking coming from um is it the basement I guess or the house in general and um, obviously as you rewatch it you kind of then realize it's Amy's voice um, coming from the basement so it kind of obviously I, I didn't notice it when I watched it the first time but as you rewatch it and obviously you know what the story and the plot is you kind of then realize it is Amy's voice and you're wondering why 
she's there <laughs> and why um it's coming from the basement now we have um sort of joyce and buffy talking again um and joyce is basically telling buffy how she was part of the yearbook team and then buffy just doesn't seem impressed and doesn't really care and then buffy sort of tells her mum that um, she's her own person and just because her mum had certain interests back in school or even now it doesn't mean that um, Buffy will have those same interests sorry I just need to put my puppy on the ground because he keeps biting me um, so it doesn't mean she'll have those um, interests as well which is kind of a clear um, difference in dynamic between um, her and Joyce and Amy and her mother and then Joyce sort of says something quite quite bad to Buffy basically saying that her own thing got her expelled from her previous school as we know Buffy moved well they moved here because Buffy was expelled from her last school um, but obviously Joyce not knowing that Buffy is Buffy's vampire set at this point and she just thinks that Buffy used to just get in trouble for the sake of getting in trouble which is obviously not true um, so hearing Joyce say this is kind of like a don't say that <laughs> Buffy's here trying to save the world and you're just sort of putting her down um, when she's trying to obviously improve um, and get better and next Cordelia the mean girl um, as we know she's been quite mean to Amy um, is the next person to become a victim of the witchcraft um, that obviously Amy um, is doing although we kind of don't know this at this point and um, kind of it's a scary moment because Cordelia literally could have either crashed her car or got hit by a car or whatever in that moment when she's under the witchcraft spell or whatever but luckily um, Buffy is obviously is there just in time to save her because um, now she's kind of seeing that everyone um, is starting to be affected from the cheerleading squad and she knows it's something to do with that and it must be someone within the cheerleading squad that's doing this to everyone and um, so she's kind of now one step ahead um, where she wasn't before and Buffy being the detective that she is and not just a fighter um, kind of has this realization that it could be Amy doing this um, and it could be Amy that has a motive um, for doing this to the cheerleaders because obviously the conversation that they had by the trophy cabinet of Amy having all this pressure to be as good as her mum um, at cheerleading and things like that all these things that she has to live up to and impress her mum she kind of now thinks Amy has something to do with it because of that and Willow and Giles come up with a plan to actually determine whether um, Amy is a witch um, or you know if it is her who could be doing it um so we see them obviously try and plan out what they need to do um to obviously try and determine if that is the case or who it could be and the next morning buffy wakes up in such a happy mood and we see her sort of wearing a cheerleading outfit singing and singing that macho man song um and she kind of accidentally lets it slip that she's vampire slayer which i don't think she meant to but i don't think it was a big deal but it was kind of is a little bit because obviously her mum doesn't know that yet and then at cheerleading practice her buffy super strength gets the better of her and we see her throw a cheerleader basically across the room um obviously she doesn't mean to do it but she has this strength that obviously other people don't have um so when she's not really i guess concentrating or really thinking about it um she can actually harm someone by just her strength um, even though if that's not her intention and then Amy we see that she's now on the team as well which is very suspicious um, but I guess it gives Buffy and obviously the other the other Scooby gang a chance to then really focus on Amy and see if anything else happens in the squad now that obviously Amy is part of the squad as well but then Giles um, being this knowledgeable man that he is uh, reveals that Buffy is part of this spell and it's the bloodstone vengeance spell so obviously her very upbeat mood uh, that we saw in the morning and how she was and things like that and obviously accidentally throwing someone across the room and chilling in practice was a result of a spell that she's under and now she's the one being targeted um obviously as we know she's part of the cheerleading squad as well so everyone in the cheerleading squad is now being targeted but um for them to obviously break the spell um and really find out what the spell is they need to get the spell book from amy's house but despite obviously 
everything that's going on and stuff with the cheerleading squad. Um, I think Buffy has still a kind of soft spot for Amy um, and obviously Amy now being a witch because of the pressure that she's gone through um, with her mum. Um, so, you know, Buffy is you know, not just there to obviously fight evil and stuff. She does really um, see the good in people even though you may not think that there is um, anything good about this person that's obviously putting on um, spells on the rest of the chilling squad. And then we cut to Amy's house. No Buffy notices that the woman who appears to be Catherine, obviously Amy's mum, it has been eating brownies and as we know um, Willow had previously told Buffy that Amy would go to Willow's house um, and eat brownies um, to obviously try and avoid everything and try and get away with her mum and it's sort of like a comfort thing for her. But although it may have seemed like an insignificant detail in the episode earlier on, has now played a pivotal role in Buffy realising, hold up, is that Catherine or is that Amy? And then she kind of puts two and two together. Sometimes this kind of story tell, storytelling can seem really convenient. Oh, okay, this is how easily we put everything together. But it kind of also shows, in a good way, that Buffy is observant. Although she doesn't seem that she listens to Giles that much or that she takes a lot of effort into sort of learning and um, being knowledgeable about, you know, the supernatural and things like that and obviously her being a slayer. Um, she actually is and she um, randomly takes small details from different things and that's how she usually sort of outwits or beats um, either the vampires or the evil um, that she's faced with um, just by little things like this and obviously her being observant and obviously now we know that Buffy has worked out that a body swap has happened between um, Amy and Catherine so um, Catherine all this, all this time has been in Amy's body um, and Amy's been trapped in Catherine's body because Catherine is basically trying to live out her glory days as um, sort of the cheerleader in her teen years and someone who people looked up to and this champion um, and she's now trying to re relive it and do it again because she feels that Amy's just wasting her, basically wasting her teenage life um and you know the talent that she's been given on nothing when her mum can be basically doing what she wants and reliving her years through amy now basically catherine is living her daughter's life for her because she just feels that amy um is just wasting her time such a simple yet true thing that actually happens i guess between um, parents and their children you know when they want their children to go to a certain college and things like that because they want them to live out their sort of dreams and things like that it's kind of what's happening now um, with Amy and Catherine now we see um, Amy well not the real Amy but Amy um, sort of with the cheerleading squad and she's basically leading cheers um, with the squad so she's basically trying to come up out on top like she was back in um, sort of her teenage years but then we see that Giles is now, obviously he's worked it out as well, and he's now um, using a spell book to weaken her spell and to weaken her. Um, so they can obviously swap her um, back with Amy um, and obviously put things right. Then we see that Willow um, is doing her part by trying to stall Catherine by asking her loads of questions about witches, witchcraft and things like that. Um, obviously coming across as very innocent and sweet. Um, but obviously we know that she's just trying to stall them and so obviously Buffy and Giles can work their magic to um, get, obviously we'll put things right between Catherine and um, Amy and obviously Catherine or Amy have not worked it out yet which is good because they're sort of not aware of what's going on and sort of playing into Buffy and Giles' plan. As we know Giles has never really performed magic before, um, he doesn't really have a clue about it and obviously Willow isn't the witch that she will once become. Um, so really Giles is on his own here trying to um, put things right using the spell. But as we know, um, Giles' sort of love and fatherly figure to Buffy um, 
kind of helps with the ritual and kind of helps him um, set things right and actually have the spell work for him. And obviously he realizes that Buffy is in danger. Um, so that alone gives him the power and the strength to try and, you know, get this spell lifted that um, Catherine has put. Um, so all that I think helps with what the actual spell is, all that inner sort of love and and anger is what really drives him to be able to do magic and break the spell. Now obviously Catherine and Amy are obviously back in their bodies and we know that Giles' spell has worked. Um, so obviously any other sort of spell that they cast has now been broken. Buffy's, Buffy's back to her normal self as well because um, basically Giles saved the day in this episode and Buffy didn't really have to fight or do anything else. It was all done by the love and the the bond that Giles has for Buffy. Obviously, it wouldn't be Buffy without her kicking some ass, as we know that she kicks Catherine's ass, um, and she basically uses her own magic, um, which is obviously her strength and her ability to fight to finally finish off um, what kind of Giles um, initially started with the spell. And we cut to sort of the ending where uh, we see Buffy and Joyce talking and Bu uh, Joyce is basically like, I don't understand what's going on with you and things like that. Um, and obviously, we you know, they're two completely different people. Buffy is a slayer. She's not just a typical teenage girl. And then Joyce kind of makes a comment of she would never want to be 16 again and go through, obviously, um, adolescence and what Buffy's going through, which kind of puts Buffy's uh, Buffy's mind at ease that there won't be any body swaps going on um, there because obviously Joyce doesn't want to be 16 again and um, Buffy is just trying to do what she, what she knows how and obviously be a teenage girl as well as um, someone who's trying to fight the world and balance both her home life with school with friends and then with romance and um, obviously at this point Joyce still doesn't know that she is a slayer so it's going to be obviously difficult for Buffy to continue to hide this news um, from her mother. And then we see Amy is finally happy living with her dad. So we know that she actually didn't hate her dad. It was all Catherine that was um, sort of saying um, that her dad was not a good guy and stuff like that. But we see them making brownies together. It's a very sweet um, ending to obviously all that we know that Amy has gone through with her mum. What has happened to Catherine? Catherine is actually trapped in her own cheerleading trophy as we see that that's happened because Cheerleading for her was when she was, you know, living her dream. She was the happiest. She was on top. So kind of what better way to end it than her practically being in her cheerleading um, trophy? Because that's what she obviously loved the most, more than her own daughter. And this is very typical with season one of Buffy ending on this kind of note where it's very creepy and it's kind of like, oh, could there be another sort of continuation to this? Um, but obviously there won't be, but Amy, um, as we know, was only supposed to be in this episode, will continue to play a bigger role in Buffy um, as season one continues. But yeah, that is it for season one, episode three um, of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you are still watching up until this point, please make sure you hit that subscribe button um, and hopefully, that means you're interested in watching more Buffy videos because I'll be doing a lot more soon. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, also comment below what your favourite Buffy episode is and also did you like that this one was focused on a different kind of supernatural than vampires? Um, if so, let me know. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah!